Thank you for participating in Moorhead at Home Skywatching, hosted by Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. My name is Amy Sale. I'm an educator at Moorhead. We are a unit of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, located on campus. And we also work throughout the state of North Carolina through a number of outreach initiatives like our mobile lab van, summer camp programs, and the annual North Carolina Science Festival. Our mission is to help people better understand science, technology, and health. And we do this through engaging learning opportunities like this live virtual event. You're here today for your guide to the moon and my colleague Nick will get us started. Hey everybody, uh, it's Nick from Moorhead Planetarium here. I'm um, excited to be with you today. Uh, so we're going to be talking all about our closest neighbor, the moon. Uh, but first I want to tell you a little bit about how this is going to work and what you're going to be seeing on your screen. So we're going to be using a program called Stellarium. We've used it in some of the past lessons. So if you're back with us again, thanks for joining. And if this is your first time, Stellarium is a free open source software that you can find at stellarium.org. Um, and they have versions for your mobile devices and for your PCs and for tablets. Um, but it's a way that we can simulate or pretend to look up at the real sky. So I know you might be inside your house right now, um, but we're going to use this kind of flat screen projection uh, to help us see what the sky will look like tonight. So what I'm going to do is share my screen and bring up Stellarium for us. Uh, but I wanted to let you know that throughout this uh, uh, process today. If you have questions or anything you're curious about, we encourage you to use the Q&A function, um, which is right down at the bottom of your screen there. Um, and that way you can maybe type questions to us. And once we talk about the moon a little bit later in the program, uh, we'll be able to answer some of those questions. So if you have something you want to say, type it in the Q&A and we will try our best to get to those. But for now, I think it's time to share our sky. So you should be seeing what looks like a blue sky um, with some grass on either side. Um, this is our daytime sky here on uh, Tuesday, May the 5th. Can't believe it's May already. Um, uh, you might notice as you look up, we can see some red letters around the horizon. You can see a W here for West, SW for Southwest, S for South, SE for Southeast and E for East. Um, that's going to help us kind of figure out which way we're pointing today. But as you look up in the big blue sky, my first question for you is, does anybody see the moon in the sky? Maybe not. Well, I do see one thing in the sky, uh, the brightest object in our daytime sky. It's what makes it daytime. You might have guessed it. It's the sun. So the sun is out. That means it's daytime. Um, and there's some interesting stories we have about the sun and the moon, and uh, my friend Amy wanted to share one with you today. So before we make it nighttime, uh, I'm gonna pass it over to her. Okay, thanks, Nick. And just as a heads up to everyone, there are quite a few of you watching. We are going to have a poll question for you at the end of this story. Um, and this is a Lithuanian story of the sun and the moon, and this is how it goes. So in the beginning, the sun and moon were together in the sky. And they spent so much time together that they began to notice each other and they fell in love. And they decided to get married and they had a baby that they named Earth. And sun, moon, and Earth all lived together in a house at the top of the sky. Well, time went by, more time, and, and sun and moon, they had a lot of differences and they began to argue about them. Sun, she liked the things of heat and light, the things of day. But Moon liked the things of night, cold and dark, and they would argue back and forth about the day and the night and the hot and the cold and the, and the heat and the light. And finally, they decided to separate. But who would watch over Earth? Sun said to Moon, you can't do it. It would be dark all the time. Earth would get too cold. And Moon said to Sun, well, you can't do it. It would be too hot and it'd be light all the time. So they decided to seek wise counsel. They went to Thunder, and Thunder listened to Sun, and Thunder listened to Moon, and then decided on a solution, joint custody. Sun would watch over Earth in the day, and Moon would watch over Earth at night. Okay, so that is not necessarily meant to be a scientific explanation of the Sun and the Moon. So we're going to have a poll question for you. And um, so we'll pop that up in just a moment. 
And the question is about when you can see the moon. So true or false, the moon is in the sky only at night. So if you think that's a true statement, click true. If you think that's false, that's not true, put false. And we'll give you a few seconds to think that over. And I think Nick has been advancing the time forward. Yeah, I wanted to mention that to you. As we were talking there, you might have noticed it kind of looked like the sun moved through the, through the sky. And it's a good reminder for us as we speed up time and slow down time and all that fun stuff we can do on our computers um, that really what's actually moving is our Earth. Our Earth rotates or spins around every single day. So when it looks like the sun's moving across the sky, really, we're the ones that are moving. All right, all right, there we go. Our poll results. Um, a few of you thought, well, maybe maybe that story got it right. The moon is in the sky only at night. Uh, most of you got the correct answer, which is false. The moon is sometimes seen at night, sometimes seen in the day. Um, and let's see what the case is today. Yeah, we're gonna test it out here. You notice we've moved to about 5 p.m. at this point, but keep your eye on the eastern horizon. What do you notice? Hey, I don't know about you, Amy. I see the sun and the moon at the same time. I do. So if the sun is above the horizon, by definition, it's daytime. So in fact, later today, May 5th, 2020, the moon will rise in the daytime before the sun goes down. And that is what the moon does when it's at the phase it is now, which is waxing gibbous. Okay, and I think we were gonna, um, it looks like Nick has taken you a little bit later. So yeah, if, it's, if it's clear tonight where you are, and it, it did look like it might be cloudy, but um, for much of North Carolina, but um, see if you can spot the moon late this afternoon. And then what time have you taken us to, Nick? This looks like it's a little after 9 p.m., which I know is getting close to bedtime for some of us, but it is a good time to see a real dark sky tonight. Um, a little, a, an hour and a half um, or so after your sunset is when you get a really true dark sky. Um, but even if it's just shortly after sunset, you might have noticed something else pop up in the sky. Very bright. It's not a star. It's not the moon. It's a planet. The planet Venus is up this evening as well. Yeah, so definitely look for Venus if you haven't spotted that. Um, and, and look soon. It's um, starting to move closer to the sun from our point of view. And so it's gonna get harder to see um, as the weeks go on. Nick, why don't we take a closer look uh, at the moon? Sure, you know, if you had a telescope or even binoculars in your backyard, you could zoom in on the moon. But here in Stellarium, we can do, do the very same thing. So hold on to your seats. We're gonna zoom in on the moon. Here we go. Wow, it's kind of like we have a telescope in our house, right, Amy? <laughs> that looks pretty good. So um, you might notice it looks a little different when you zoom in on it um, from how you see it with your eyes. Um, one of the really neat things about getting a closer look at the moon is you can see all sorts of surface features. So I don't know about you when it was zoomed way out like this. When I look at the moon, sometimes I can imagine there's a face in the moon. Maybe you've even called it the man in the moon. Um, Let's talk about what those actually are because in our imaginations, we love to see faces. We love to make pictures in clouds. We love to connect the dots to the constellations. But really, those areas on the moon that might kind of look like a face to us are a really interesting feature on its surface. So these dark areas, um, ancient astronomers actually thought that those were big bodies of water. Um, and they named them after big bodies of water on Earth. They used a term called maria or mare, which means seas or oceans. So when ancient astronomers looked at the moon, they really thought it was a lot like Earth. They thought these big dark areas uh, were bodies of water. Now, as you look closer at it, and after more scientific investigation over the years, we figured out that they're not actually big bodies of water. Um, they're flat areas um, that have dried from previous volcanic activity on the moon. And they're just geologically, which means what they're made of, the rocks that they're made of, um, they're different than the surrounding parts of the moon. So uh, these mare still have that name, seas or oceans, but really uh, they're kind of like flat areas that turn out to be pretty good landing spots when we go to explore them. 
So even though it's really fun to see the man in the moon or the cat in the moon or the rabbit in the moon, um, that's what these big, um, big dark areas actually are. And another thing you might notice is that it looks like the moon has lots of little holes in it. You might know that these are called craters. Craters happen in a really interesting way. Uh, things like little bits of rock uh, out in our solar system have whacked into the moon's surface and they leave a mark. The moon doesn't have a big atmosphere like our Earth. An atmosphere is that air you're breathing in right now. And with an atmosphere comes wind and rain and erosion and all of those processes here on the Earth make it so that any marks from things that have, have hit the Earth from space kind of get washed away over time. That doesn't happen on the moon. Anything that's hit the moon uh, leaves its mark for a lot longer because uh, it's not washed away by the wind and the rain and the erosion. So um, some of these craters could be millions of years old, uh, but they're, they look really small on your screen here, but really they could also be many, many kilometers wide. Um, so it would, it would be a big trip to cross an entire crater. And Nick, um, I noticed in the Q&A, uh, Mary typed in a question asking, why are there dents on the moon? Which I thought was a great uh, way to describe craters. So yeah. Mary, I hope that answered your question. And right now at this phase of the moon, you can see a lot of craters. Um, so uh, now's a really good time if you, if you want to try to see some of those craters or dents on the moon yourselves. All right, um, well, we've talked about what the moon looks like, but um, it's possible that you all have noticed from day to day, from night to night, that the moon appears to change in terms of how much of it looks lit up. So right now it looks like it's almost fully lit. It's uh, what's called waxing gibbous, that's its phase. The phases of the moon are the different appearances it has uh, depending on how much of it is being lit up by the sun. And I think Nick is getting things in position, so we're gonna try to demonstrate um, different phases to you. Um, and I'll just mention, um, while he's getting things ready, uh, you can find um, uh, on our website, moreheadplanetarium.org, as well as a NASA site, moon.nasa.gov, um, a moon journal. And so we encourage you to keep a moon journal. See if you can spot the moon um, from day to day or from night to night and draw a picture of what it looks like to you. Um, you might draw a full circle, for example, if it's fully lit up, or you might shade in dark parts if uh, part of it doesn't look like it's being lit up. All right, so Nick, are we gonna be able to show them phases? I think we're all set. You know, in the real world, you have to wait for lots of time to pass to be able to tell that the moon looks different from night to night or week to week. But right here in this program, we can speed up and uh, move time a little differently to show you. So what I'd like for everybody to pay attention to is our date right down here. You see it says 2020, 05, 05. That tells us it's today, the 5th of May and 2020. So that date is gonna change. So as you see the moon change, check and see uh, how the date changes as well. So what's our first step, Amy? We, 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 I think we, we want to maybe- back a week? Yeah, let's see what the moon looked like last week. Some of you might've even gone outside to, to check it out yourselves. I'm gonna move us back one week. Here we go. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that actually brought up uh, a great point, which is that the position of the moon does change relative to the background of the stars. So if you jump back a week, it's going to be in a different location. <laughs> All right. Oh, and then Nick, while you're um, getting things set up, somebody I noticed in the Q&A asked why there's an X4, a times four next to the moon. Good question. And uh, that's just, um, we basically have increased the size, the apparent size of the moon to make it easier to spot in the stellarium sky. Let's see if it'll follow it this time. Um, so again, we're back uh, on our current day. Let's see if it will follow it. There <gasps> we go. That looks great. So was that April 28th, a week ago? Yep, that's a week ago today. Okay, so that looks to me like uh, I would say the phase is a very thick waxing crescent. Um, waxing means getting more and more lit up from day to day. We're going to see it get from just part partially illuminated to much more illuminated. And a uh, crescent is sort of like that smile or banana shape. And so um, 
What do you all think is lighting up the moon? Does the moon have glow sticks inside of it, Nick? <laughs> I don't think so, even though that would be pretty cool. <laughs> so everybody think about that for a minute. What do you think is lighting up the moon? Does the moon create its own light? Nope, it's the sun. So that lit portion of the moon is being lit up by the sun. And uh, the lit up part, that's daytime on the moon. And that part that's dark, nighttime on the moon. Right now, you might be very curious what this little dot is moving in front of our moon. That's a oh, satellite. Yeah. Oh, we have so. lots of satellites out in space um, that do all sorts of things for us here on Earth. And you can see them sometimes in the nighttime sky. So um, that, that one's been identified. Um, yeah. That was April 28th though, so we've, we've missed that. Yeah. <laughs> but are we ready to go forward? Yeah, sure, let's move, um, let's move a day at a time forward so we can okay. see how it changes from day to day. So friends, just pay attention to your date down here. You see we're on April 28th. Let's move forward one day. Ooh, April 29th, okay. much more of it looks lit up to me. Okay, what about the next day? <sighs> April 30th, so this um, is what's called first quarter. Um, the phase is first quarter. That's a little bit confusing if you have learned fractions because that is not a quarter of the moon that is lit up. That is half of the side of the moon facing us that's actually lit. The first quarter refers to the moon being one quarter of its way in its orbit around Earth. Okay, so that was April 30th. What, what, so everybody make a prediction right now. What do you think it will look like when we move forward one more day to May 1st? And then yeah, Nick will show us. Here we go. Waxing gibbous, so more and more lit up. What about the second? Even more. Okay, let's go another day. May 3rd. What about May 4th? Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. and then tonight, May 5th, for those of you watching live. And it's still technically waxing gibbous. It will be full um, on May 7th. The moon is full at a particular instant in time, which will be 6.45 a.m. Eastern, Thursday, May 7th. But it's gonna probably, if you see it tonight, it will look full to you. Tonight, May 5th, also look full May 6th. It'll probably look full to you on May 7th as well. Wonderful. And these phases happen because the moon is orbiting around the earth. So everybody get ready. We're gonna have a poll question for you. So um, let's pop up that next poll, poll question. And the question is about how long does it take the moon to orbit earth? So the moon goes around or orbits earth. About how long does that take? Does it take a day? Does it take a month? Move. Does it take a year? So go ahead and enter your votes. We'll give you a few seconds to put in your votes. How long does it take the moon to orbit the earth? By the way, this is not the same as the amount of time it takes, for example, the moon to go from one moon rise to a moon set, but an entire orbit around Earth. When the moon is in the same direction of the sky as the sun, that's new moon. Um, a new moon is going to be with the sun in the sky. It'll be up in the day, all day, only in the day. You also won't see it because it's the backside of the moon that's being lit. Um, when the moon is, uh, has gone through, it's uh, halfway through its orbit. It's on the opposite side of Earth as the sun. So it's being fully lit up by the sun. That's full moon. So that's gonna be the situation on May 7th. Um, full moon, fully lit. It is up all night, only at night, all night long. Any other phase, the moon is up partly in the day, partly at night. Because the moon is not quite full, it's waxing gibbous. It's rising uh, right now a couple of hours before sunset. It'll be up. Um, those last couple of hours before sunset and um, tonight may 5th and then through most of the night but it will set before the sun rises okay let's see what the poll results are and most of you all got it it takes the moon about a month a month to orbit earth and in fact that is why the word um, is called month it comes from the word for moon so it takes about a month for the moon to orbit earth <laughs> So now you'll always remember it and just think about moon. Okay, well, you know, 
I love talking about the moon and seeing how it changes from night to night, Amy. But there's one thing I've been thinking this whole time that I'm kind of curious about. Oh, what's that? Has anybody ever been to the moon? Oh, yeah. Has anybody ever walked on the moon? Let's um, pop up another poll question for you all. How many people have walked on the moon? You have four options. How many people have walked on the moon? The first option is none. Only robotic spacecraft have been there. The next option is one person has walked on the moon, Neil Armstrong. The next option is 12 people have walked on the moon. And your final option is hundreds of people have walked on the moon. So pick the option that you think is the best guess. I'll give you all a few seconds to think about that. And I, I don't know, Nick, I'm thinking about a spoiler alert for this one. Because Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center, we've had a role in uh, astronaut training. Yeah, we sure have. Um, 62 NASA astronauts actually trained in North Carolina in Chapel Hill at the Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center back in the 1960s and 1970s. So hopefully that doesn't spoil your answer too yeah. much. And I will say, not all 62 of them went to the moon, but some of them did. So let's see what the answer is, see what you all did. Most of you all got it. 80% uh, of you all um, got the answer. It is 12. 12 people have walked on the moon. Neil Armstrong was the first one, though, so that was an excellent guess. And hundreds, maybe that'll be true in the future. Yeah, maybe some of you watching right now will be some of the next astronauts to go to the moon. Why not? Um, one neat thing to kind of tie it together before we move on and uh, take some of your questions and show you some resources is you might remember earlier I mentioned that the Mare, the Maria, are really good uh, flat places to land on the moon. We can actually see where the first astronauts landed on the moon from this view. This kind of almost circular area right here is called the Sea of Tranquility. Um, and again, I know it's kind of weird to think of it as a sea, even though it's not made of water, but the Sea of Tranquility, about right here where my cursor is pointing, uh, is the landing site of Apollo 11. The first people who stepped foot on the moon did it just about right here. So even from our view tonight, uh, you can learn a little bit about that history as well. But for now, let's zoom out. And we've been hanging out here at about 9.30 p.m. this whole time. Um, we want to show you a little bit more of the nighttime sky. So as we move forward, you're going to notice uh, many uh, different patterns of stars moving overhead. You might even see some more of those satellites zooming around. I know this is getting way past bedtime for a lot of us, but that's okay. Here uh, in a stellarium or planetarium sky, you can stay up really, really late. And Amy, I just noticed some really interesting things kind of popping up over here. Oh yeah, look at all that sky. planet action. Yeah, we can see planets in the early morning. You notice this is about 5.30 a.m., 5.23 a.m. right now. Uh, so you have to be an, an, an early bird to catch the planets. Yeah, and they, they're a reward for those of you willing to get up very early. And um, Nick, I am seeing a lot of really great questions oh, um, here. And I, I don't think we're going to be able to get to them all. Um, there's a lot of you watching and a lot of questions. But... Um, I'll maybe start out with, um, since we were mentioning astronauts and people who had been to the moon, um, there's a question about how strong is the gravity on the moon? Why is it strong or not strong? So um, let me tackle that one. And while I'm answering that, Nick, if you want to look for one you want to answer. Sure. Um, so the, there is gravity on the moon, a, a misconception, a wrong idea that sometimes uh, we hear uh, about the moon and the planetarium is that, oh, it doesn't have any gravity. No, it does have gravity. It's about one sixth the gravity um, on Earth. And the, the basic reason is that the moon is just a lot smaller than Earth. And um, so it doesn't have as much gravity for that reason. But it means that if you went to the moon, you could find yourself probably able to jump pretty high, kick a ball pretty far. It'd be a pretty fun thing to do. Yeah, that's a great question. I saw two questions here that are kind of related from Natalie and Mary, um, who said, could the moon have frozen water? And if you drilled into the moon really far, would you eventually get to water? I love that question because that's the, exactly the same question that scientists at NASA and other space agencies are asking all the time. 
we do have some evidence that there's frozen liquid water or frozen water, um, sorry, not liquid water, uh, at the bottom of craters on the moon. So yes, it is possible that if you drilled, you could find evidence of water, but I bet it would look a lot different than the water we have here on Earth. Um, as we mentioned, the temperatures can be kind of extreme on the moon, and we think the most likely way for there to be any water on the moon is if it's frozen and really cold. So it is possible, and that's one of the reasons we want to go back to the moon to explore it even more. So I wasn't joking when I said some of you watching might be the next folks to go to the moon. Um, if you're Natalie or Mary, your question could get answered. Um, I think that's so neat because when we think about what we need to be alive, water is at the top of the list. And if there's water on the moon, uh, that lets our imaginations kind of explore the options. Okay. Um, thanks, Nick. And I see a question from Izzy. Um, why is the moon different colors? Um, so you might be referring to those like whitish the parts that looked whitish, the lunar highlands versus the darker Maria, the lava plains. Um, but I'm wondering, you might be referring to the fact that sometimes when you look at the moon in the sky, it might look more yellow or orangish or reddish. And there's two reasons, especially why the moon can look reddish. The most common reason is because you're seeing it near the horizon, low down to the, you know, it looks like it's low to the ground because it's just rising or setting. Um, and when you look at anything that's near the horizon, you're looking through lots of atmosphere, lots of air. And um, preferentially what you see are the red wavelengths of light. So that's why the moon can look kind of reddish when you see it low down. There's another reason why it can look reddish though, um, which is less common, and that's if there's a lunar eclipse. Um, this can sometimes happen at full moon, not every full moon, but sometimes at full moon, the full moon will pass into Earth's shadow, and it usually turns a weird shade, a kind of red when that happens. Um, and it's going to be a while till the next total lunar eclipse. So have to wait a while for that one. That's an awesome question. Um, I found one on here that I, it's kind of a clarifying question from Ella. Ella said, Apollos have been to the moon? And I don't think I actually mentioned what Apollo is. Apollo is the name of the, um, uh, the original moon mission. So um, a lot of times NASA names their missions out of uh, or after mythological figures. So Apollo uh, was one of, the, one of the gods in Greek and Roman mythology. So uh, he, got, he got the moon mission named after him. The connection that I wanna make is that uh, Apollo had a sister named Artemis. And our new moon missions, the NASA's new moon missions that are upcoming are called Artemis. So um, I think that's a really neat mythological connection, just like how Amy told us that really cool Lithuanian story earlier. Stories that you hear can connect you to the sky. Um, so if you want to, you can do a little bit of research on your own on the Artemis mission. Uh, it's really exciting. Uh, and uh, I, I just wanted to clear that up since um, uh, I didn't really say what Apollos were. Okay, great, thank you. And um, Nick, there I saw one that I was gonna answer. You didn't already talk about how the moon was made, did you? I did not. Okay, so Jules asked, how was the moon made? Um, the, what scientists think is that a long time ago, billions of years ago, um, when the solar system was much newer, there was a lot more stuff flying around and Earth got hit by something really big, like the size of Mars, not Mars but something the size of Mars. This thing hit Earth and then this stuff flew out and then eventually came back and uh, accumulated itself into the moon. And the moon has not always been at the same distance from us. I saw another question earlier on that somebody asked about that. It's actually uh, moving away from us just a tiny little bit all the time. Okay, and Nick, I don't know, do we have time for one more question or not? We're very close to 1030. I think, I think we have time for one more. Um, sure, how about, um, maybe, maybe you can answer this one, Amy, and it's okay. Um, if you, okay, if you I'll, I'll try throw to it back it. to you if I don't like it. Give me the yeah. question. <laughs> this is kind of related because um, we were talking about how the moon changes, changes colors and things like that. Um, 
how often are solar eclipses or how often do solar eclipses happen? Oh yeah, that's a great question. So um, let's first quickly, what a solar eclipse is. We talked about lunar eclipse. Lunar means moon, eclipse means cover up. A lunar eclipse is when the moon looks like it's getting covered up by Earth's shadow. That can only happen at full moon, although at most full moons it doesn't happen. A solar eclipse happens at new moon, not every new moon, just occasionally. There are roughly a couple times a year that you have the potential for eclipses when things can line up just right. So a solar eclipse, solar means sun, eclipse means cover up. A solar eclipse happens if a new moon passes directly in front of the sun. And so many of you all may remember August um, 2017, on August 21st, there was a total solar eclipse for the United States. It wasn't total um, for Central North Carolina, not for the Triangle area, but in other places in the US. Um, we'll have another total solar eclipse in the United States on April 8th, 2024. Mark your calendars, it's a Monday. All right, Nick, I think we're out of time. I know, we wish we could sit here and answer your questions all day, but You'll just have to save them for our next session on Thursday. Um, this is so fantastic, though. Thank you for all your good thoughts. Um, and hopefully you've learned some good stuff about the moon. So um, just in closing, Amy put a couple of links in our chat or uh, to all attendees over here at the moon.nasa.gov and our moreheadplanetarium.org website. Those are fantastic places uh, to give you some resources if you want to learn a little bit more about this stuff. Um, if you or your parents want to get more information about the Morehead at Home program uh, and or our sky watching program specifically, please follow us on social media, whether it's uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, or Facebook. You can look at uh, Morehead Planetarium on uh, Instagram and, and Facebook and Morehead Planet on Twitter. And uh, these sessions that we're doing every Tuesday and Thursday, they're being recorded and they're going to be posted on our YouTube account. So if you ever want to go back and watch um, to get clarification, or if you just really love it and you want to see it again, feel free to do that as well. Thank you, everyone. Hope to see you on Thursday. See you next time.